Right, I'll, I'll put the uh, camera over, I'll zoom in a bit. Hi everyone and welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome back to Felix. So today we're going to do a walkthrough of my watch collection. It's going to be pretty ad hoc and with regards to this video, so it's a walk around if you like of my watch collection, but uh, I think Felix is just going to shoot off now. He's got his four poor court. So today's video is going to be a walk around or a walk around as we say in, with regards to the supercar speak when you, when you walk around the car giving a, an overall appreciation of the car. Um, a walk around of my watch collection. I'm not going to go into great detail on each watch. What I'll do is I'll give you an overview of um, how the watch came about, um, just to give a little bit of background for each piece. Um, but I'm going to go into detail for each watch on a separate video. Some of the, some of the watches you'll already recognize here, um, well, one of the watches in particular already recognize here because I've already done a video on it. For example, the BLNR Batman, which has actually got the Oyster bracelet. As I detailed on the previous video, this watch is actually up for sale at the moment. Drop me a message in the comments if you're interested in purchasing it. So I won't be going into detail on, on in, in great detail on any of the watches, um, but I'll just be walking you through the actual collection that I have at the moment. Okay, so just looking at the watch collection, I just this isn't in any particular order. I'll just pick them out. Um, I'll end on a particular piece and, and what I perceive you, you might, <laughs> You might hear the, one of the cats. We've got two ragdoll cats, brother and sister. You might hear them um, calling in the background. They're very talkative, so they talk a lot. So if you can hear some meowing or anything going on, they're not being strangled. It's just ragdoll cats. They're, they're quite intelligent cats and they're very talkative, which of course is really nice and maybe not so great when you're trying to shoot a video. But so I'm just gonna pull some watches out um, ad hoc and then walk you through them. And as I said, I'll leave one particular watch at the very end You'll hear Felix crying in the background. It's because he can hear my voice. So he's talking to me because he can hear my voice. He thinks I'm talking to him <laughs> when I'm talking to the camera. So I'll pull the first one out of the collection. Let's go with the, I've got a, a few Omegas here in the collection. So let's, let's go for this Omega. This is the um, Omega Apollo 17, 17, Apollo 17, 45th, anniversary edition now it's probably not a good idea that I go for we've got the lovely blue dial there and this is the stainless steel all stainless steel model it's probably just as well with the Omegas that I don't go into the actual reference numbers because they are long and um, for example the reference number for this item is 311.30.42.30.03.02 well, that's really going to make it memorable, isn't it? <laughs> Omega are well known for their reference numbers. 
um, and making them so complex that nobody can ever quote them. Obviously, I'm not reading that off by heart. I've read that off a queue. Um, so this is the 45th anniversary of Apollo 17 Omega. It's a beautiful um, edition. I, I bought this because I just fell in love with the blue dial. It's a beautiful dial. And obviously, being stainless steel, it really, um, really works together very well. The um, this model has a hor it's obviously chronograph, so chronograph um, and obviously time. Those are the, the complications on the watch. Beautiful blue dial. It's got serochrome gold lay-ins on the dial markers for the for the minutes, and also um, on the actual hour and minutes hands as well, as you can see there. You might hear some scratching going on in the background. Felix again is doing all sorts of things. Um, so you're hearing, you're seeing dashing around. Cassie's gone up to bed, I think. So um, there's actually two pieces for this watch. I'll actually try and show it a bit closer to the camera. This is a wide angle lens. So I need to try and get it so you can get a really good image of it. I bought this because I was in London consulting for a corporation and I went into one of the Omega flag flagship stores in London and I happened to see the gold version, the solid gold version of this watch. And I really loved the design of the dial um, and fell in love with the actual style of the watch. Um, but the gold version was very expensive, obviously being solid 18 karat gold. And it was just too much in my, you know, it was just too much to spend on the watch. And, you know, everybody probably knows that Omega goes, yeah, they make so many special editions and they just don't hold their value in general. So I wasn't going to invest that amount of money into something that wasn't going to hold its value. Um, and it was uh, very low numbers as well. So it was either buy it then or lose it because potentially it was such a low number model um, being in gold that it would be gone. And so when I got back um, from, from work that, that week for the weekend, I decided that I would try and get hold of this stainless steel version. Now, because it was circa six to nine months after the actual initial release of this particular model, um, it proved exceptionally hard. In fact, there wasn't a version around. You either buy it on the gray market or you don't get it at all. Now, I'm not really into buying too many watches on the gray market. Um, I like to buy them from an authorized dealer and I don't like to pay a premium for the watches. I did a lot of searches around on the internet. I came across the jewelers and I called them. They said, oh yes, they had, they had it in stock. And I said, well, can you just go and check? So they said, yeah, yeah, we'll just go and check in the safe. So they went and checked in the safe and sure enough, they had it. And I said, well, okay, well, first of all, I'd like to buy it. <laughs> um, so I bought it there and then. And um, I said, well, why have you got it in stock? Nobody else has got this in stock. She said, well, she didn't really know what the watch was. Um, they weren't an Omega flagship. They weren't an Omega boutique shop. Um, they were a reseller. And they said, well, um, it had been delivered late and it had only been delivered for that weekend just prior. So they'd had it delivered late. It was, it was circa six months late being delivered for some reason. It just so happened to turned up and they just put it on the website. And I was pretty much the first person to hit the website and it just complete fluke of fate. And I managed to purchase it. And it's quite a well sought after watch and uh, it's probably one that I'll never sell and will stay in the collection. It's, it's just beautiful, as you can see from the dial. It's got a horizontal clutch on the, on the chronograph, which means that when you, engage the, when you engage the chronograph, you actually mesh gears. So sometimes you see when you, when you actually engage the chronograph, you see the second hand or the chronograph hand slightly um, skip and be a bit jittery when you actually engage it or when you switch it on and off. And that's because literally, you're meshing gears together. So if you think about it, horizontal clutch actually engages the chronograph mechanism by trying to by trying to mesh gears. Now, if you've got a slight situation where obviously this is your perceivably the chronograph that you're meshing, so this is controlling the chronograph hand. If it slightly meshes this way instead of that way, or they aren't quite aligned and it has to go one way or the other, then obviously the hand is going to slightly move forwards or backwards depending on how the gears mesh because the actual gears have to mesh and then obviously from that point forward the actual hand will be fluid and will move fluently. So if you've ever wondered when you start a chronograph if the actual chronograph hand slightly jitters, it slightly flicks a little bit when you start it or when you restart it then that's why because you're actually meshing gears on a horizontal clutch chronograph. 
Vertical clutches, you don't have that situation, but you do on horizontal clutches. So that's the Apollo 17 45th edition. This is a limited edition watch as well. Uh, this is limited edition watch, and this is numbered 1189 of 1972. And it has power reserve of 48 hours with the movement 1861, so the 1861 movement. Incidentally, you may notice in some of the watches, um, this is actually my daily wearer. Um, when, I'm, when I'm consulting, when I'm in the office, I actually commonly wear this, and that's because most people don't know what it is. It's not a flash looking watch, and um, I just love wearing it. It's got a good amount of weight to it as well, which I quite like. And as I say, the beautiful blue dial with the gold accents just, is just a stunning watch. Uh, but uh, some of you may notice that there's a bit of um, uh, cellophane or tape, as it's bike tape actually, as it's known, on the back of my clasps. And that's because I've used to compete in cycling, mountain biking competitions, road bike competitions, amongst other sports. And I learnt to use a lot of bike tape to protect my bikes. And of course, there's no reason why you shouldn't use bike tape again to protect the clasps. I'm really surprised that a lot of people haven't cottoned onto that, but uh, so that protects the clasp against getting scratches, so um, which is um, works out really well for all my watches. I've also got it on my on my daily wear at the moment, which I'll get to when um, on my daily wearer when I'm not in the office, which I'll get to at the moment, which is hence why I haven't done a wristwatch check. So moving on to the next watch, I'll pick up the might as well do both of the main key omegas. This is the um, Omega 50th anniversary, so Apollo 50th, 50th anniversary. And this is all stainless steel, obviously it's a Speedmaster, so it's chronograph again, and all stainless steel. This is the only model, this is the only Speedmaster, now correct me in the comments below if, if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the only Speedmaster that has an enamel, a black enamel dial. Now, I bought this many, many years ago. I was after a Speedmaster to go with my then Daytona that I had, and this Speedmaster became available at a jeweler's, um, brand new from the authorised dealers, special edition, and I decided to buy it. And I've had it ever since. I believe I bought it back in, ooh, 2005, I believe, something along those lines. And uh, it stayed with me ever since. It's just, it's got the standard um, Speedmaster accents, the white hands, white hour minute hands, and the actual black dial. In this case, as I said, a black enamel dial. Now, this was, this is numbered 423 out of 1,957, obviously the 1957 being very rela relational to the actual landings. An interesting artifact of this watch or an interesting association with this watch is the box that it comes in. It comes in, I should have brought the box down, but I, I haven't, but I've got a box um, st stored away. But a box is about this big, a big wooden box, and it's got all the tools in there that you could possibly want. So it's famous for coming with a very, very big um, solid wood presentation box um, with all the actual watch tools and a spare, um, a spare bracelet. Well, it's not a spare bracelet, actually a spare strap, a spare leather strap, which I've actually never used, which has a deploying clasp on it as well. Obviously this has a deploying clasp on it, uh, but that's standard for bracelets. And this, has a vertical clutch. So when you start the chronograph, there is no jittering around. Uh, there is no jittery with the, set, this, the chronograph hand does not jitter at all because the actual mechanisms are continually running. Um, and what actually happens is the, you, you're in effect freeing up the seconds hand to actually start running. The mechanism is always, always running. There's no meshing of gears. So you just literally start the chronograph hand running and therefore there's no jittering, there's no flicking um, when you start the chronograph or when you start, when you, or when you restart the chronograph. It's another lovely piece. I don't wear this anywhere near as much as I should, and this particular model also has the case back. By the way, this is the movement 3201, and this has a 55 hour power reserve. So moving on to the watch that I least wear actually. Now this was um, an impetuous purchase. Probably if I could if I could get out of this watch and, and sell it, I probably would. It's a very beautiful watch, um, very dainty, and it's the timeless, it's the timeless model um, with the El Primero movement. 
and it's got the 4061L Primera movement uh, with a 50 hour hour reserve. The reason why I say it's, it was a very impetuous purchase is because in general it's I don't buy dress watches and this is a dress watch. I bought it because it's beautiful and I love the petrol blue chronograph hand on that. And of course because it's got the El Primero movement it's also got a, a clear case back on there, presentation case back to show the El Primero movement and of course because it's got the El Primero movement. The champagne dial on this is very beautiful as well. As I say, it's a dress watch and it's quite small, so um, I've actually only ever worn this a couple of times, which is a shame really, because it is a beautiful watch. So this is an interesting watch. This is the Breitling Unitime Sleek T. I don't think that's the full name, but it's pretty much the full name. It's quite a, a chunky watch. Um, and this is actually, um, as, it, as the name suggests, the Unitime Sleek T, it's actually a world time. So it'll tell you your time all around the world. So it gives you all the hourly offsets for the different countries, um, which is very, very useful. And of course, with a full mechanical movement, it's very cool how it actually performs this. You can also set it to your hour offset times. So when you move into summertime, etc., you can actually uh, adjust it accordingly and it's quite easy to adjust um, with respect to uh, jumping an hour forward and an hour backwards. Quite complex to set up originally though because you've got multi-stages on the actual crown uh, to set up the actual different time zones or to set up the main time zone and to set up the, the current time zone and the world time zones. It's quite a heavy watch, um, which is quite nice as well. And something that um, is quite unique to this watch is that the actual bezel around here, I believe is titanium. So it's very strong. So you can bash the bezel around and you shouldn't damage it. You will see by looking at it closely that the bezel is a slightly different color and it has one of the common types of uh, Breitling straps as well, which denotes, which sets Breitling, Breitling out from a lot of the other models. Okay, so moving on to my next Breitling. I only have two Breitlings in the collection. And this is my last purchase. So this is the Breitling Navitimer 806. This is the rec recreation 806. This is a beautiful watch. And this is limited in numbers too. This has the B35 Breitling movement, in-house movement, and it's got a 70 hour power reserve. And the dial on this is just stunning. It's a beautiful watch. And I commonly wear this a lot. When it, when it comes out of the watch box, then I don't put it back for a very long time. Now here, it hasn't got the original leather strap that it came with, which again, takes it back to the original times of the original um, 806. Here, I, I managed to procure I managed to procure a new old stock JB mesh strap. This strap, as I say, is new old stock, so it's the same year, or it's an original year strap. It's not a new model. Um, and this was originally designed because the 806 never came on a mesh strap, it came on a leather strap. Um, but this mesh strap was originally on the Cosmonaut model. So I wanted to put a, a mesh strap on it and I wanted to put a strap that was as close as possible to the year and to the model of the actual 806, the original 806. So I managed to procure this, um, I think it's a Champion JB mesh strap. So it's a, it's a stunning, beautiful watch. Unfortunately, I wear it quite a bit and it's got a, a Hesalite style um, crystal. It's not got a sapphire crystal, so of course you've got to be so careful. You can um, you can mark them very easily and damage them. But yeah, that's the Breitling 806. When I purchased the Navitimer, I always was interested in in buying a Navitimer. But the the Navitimers, the modern Navitimers, or the, or the modern styled Navitimers, are just so big and so you know, perceivably um, a bit garish or, you know, in my opinion, a bit garish. They're just too big. And, and uh, this was just perfect when they released the 806. That was that, I just knew that was the actual model that I wanted. And I was very fortunate that um, this is in low numbers. I can't remember how many were actually produced of this. It might be 1,861, um, but um, I can't, I can't be sure of that. And uh, I was very fortunate to get this. I got it a little bit of discount as well. Um, you know, mostly you should never buy Breitling brand new because um, they pretty much drop through the floor after um, 
they you know they never go up in value but um, the 806 may go up in value and the 806 was one of the few watches that was very very hard to get any any discount on but I did, I did manage it so moving on to the um, next watch in the in the collection and that will be the watch I'm wearing which is the Rolex two-tone Daytona the 11 six five oh three with the blue with the sorry with the black tahitian mother of pearl dial i've already done a video on this watch so i won't spend too long talking about it so this has the 4130 movement which has a 72 hour which has a 72 hour power reserve obviously it's two-tone so it's stainless steel with solid gold links it's a stunningly beautiful watch um, when i'm not working on site then this is commonly my daily wear, as you'll see from the marks around the bracelet. There's links below to my other video, so if you go to the links, to, if you navigate to the link on watches, you'll see the video for this Daytona, which is actually the, the previous video to this one that I'm, that I'm developing now, that I'm producing now. Beautiful watch, and um, yeah, just, just stunning dial. The, this, this watch is all about the black Tahitian mother pearl dial, absolutely stunning. And the and the subdials which are actually ground gold. But again, go to navigate to the video that I produced before, and you'll you'll get the full details on this watch. I've also um, pushed a video out on this watch already. So go to the link below to the series on watches, and you'll be able to get to perceive the video on this watch. Actually, it might be in the supercar section because I did um, I amalgamated this with an update on the four five eight um, supercar. And. This is the Rolex GMT2. This is the 116710 BLNR. Um, BLNR, as I said in my video, means stands for Bleu and Noir, which is the French for blue and blue and black. And it's called the Batman because of the blue and black. And it has the 3186 movement, so it's the pre-update watch. And it has the Oyster bracelet. Um, this is a 2019 model, and this is for sale at the moment. It's unworn, as new and just stays in the safe, it's never been worn. So if you're interested in purchasing this, please drop me a message below and we can have a discussion. We're now moving on towards the end of the watches in my collection, in my current collection anyway. And this is a bit of a funky number now that I'm gonna bring up. Um, a lot of you will shout shitter as soon as you see this. Um, it's the Timex and it's the M79. And I bought this purely as a bit of fun now it's got a proper movement in it they just class it as a 21 dual movement um, but i actually think it's quite funky and obviously it's fairly inexpensive definitely very inexpensive compared to my other pieces but it's just a bit of fun and i also had the q timex watch which actually has a uh, an automated which doesn't have an automated movement doesn't have a mechanical movement it has a quartz movement so i also have i also had the q timex which as you know has a has a quartz movement and I gave my son the Q Timex and I bought this so that we could both wear Timexes. So we could be called the Timex twins or I'm sure you can put a, another word there with the word Timex, which I, I can't use on the video. I've heard all sorts in my lifetime. But it's actually quite a funky little watch and considering I think it was 205 or 250 pounds, something like that. It's a, it's a nice little watch and it's just a bit of fun, you know? Um, so I wear it when I just feel you know a bit of a fun mood and. You know, it doesn't matter how much a watch costs, it's whether you like it or not. And as you'll notice from my collection, my collection is very eclectic. I don't necessarily buy all Breitlings, I don't necessarily buy all Omegas, I don't necessarily buy all Rolex. Um, I buy what I like and I wear what I like and that's what people should do for their collections. There's only the one piece that I've used in my collection as an investment piece and that was the Batman and that wasn't initially intended I bought it to wear but um, because the the prices would just became so sky high I just thought well just to be safe um, I'd better put it to one side and just to see um, you know what goes with regards to the values and you know fortunately the the, the prices are still quite high on the Batman so it was a good time to sell it now the last piece in my in my collection that I'm going to show you is a very very special piece to me and it's, it's very, very special for sentimentality reasons. It's not special from the point of view of value. It is a beautiful watch, and it is the Eterna with the 520 movement. Now this is very special because I inherited this from my father. This isn't the original strap. I'm still trying to find an original strap for this, but this is a solid gold 
Eterna. And it's a dress watch, pretty much never wear it. It's just very special to me because I inherited it from my father. My father's now passed away and he inherited it from his father. I believe it's a 1946 Eterna. It has the 520 movement and a 42 hour power reserve. And it, when you wind it up, when it's set, it does actually function. There's no problems with it. It's got a little bit of a crack on the crystal because obviously it's a Hesalite style crystal. It's not sapphire. And you know, I wear this purely to commemorate my relationship with my father. And when you wind it up, it's one of those really noisy movements, which uh, really, really makes a strong ticking sound. I'll put it up to the microphone, I'll just put it up to the camera there, and I'll put it up to the microphone, you may be able to hear it. Stunning watch, but stunning for many different reasons. It's got a, obviously a solid gold case back on it as well. This would be passed down to my son and will never be sold from the collection. If my son sells it, I'll haunt him for the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> Very special watch. And by far, say this, I think this was valued ages ago around 2000 pounds, purely because of the amount of gold in it. I'll never sell it. So the value has no meaning to me. And you know, it's, it's just very, very special watch, just purely from the point of view of, um, and, you know, it's my father's watch. For all you guys out there that, you know, you have your special watches, whether your wife gave you a watch or whether your son gave you a watch or whether you're a son and your father gave you the watch, don't sell those watches. They're special. You can never get those back again. You'll always regret it. If you've got any, any honor about you and any sensibility, then you'll always regret it. And you know, just don't do it. Never ever sell a personal watch that was given to you by your wife, by your, by, by your son or daughter, um, or you inherited in this manner as I did with this Eterna, because you can never get them back. And you know, you've got to keep that heritage in the family. I am old school and I am old style, but you know, that's my opinion. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed my walk around, walk through, or state of the art, whichever way you want to call it, of my watch collection. Um, I'm hoping to add a few time pieces to this collection. As, as I detailed a little bit earlier, hopefully a Pepsi with a Jubilee bracelet, and the new GMT2 Pepsi with a Jubilee bracelet. I'd like to also add a James Cameron Deep Sea as well to the collection. And there's many, many other pieces. I mean, my Grail watch pretty much is a Grand Complication Patek Philippe, um, probably a world time, um, but uh, you know, I struggle to and fro with spending that amount of money on a watch. It's just uh, crazy amounts of money. Having said that, obviously there is a lot of money invested in this in this watch collection. Um, it, it tends to catch up on you. You know, you, these things. You know, you fall in love with these with these movements, with these timepieces. Um, and the reasons why you know I love these types of watches is because of the engineering. I'm a I'm a scientific engineer myself, and. I just love the engineering behind these. They're a thing of beauty and just the engineering is, is just incredible. The way how the dials are engineered, the way the movements are engineered. And you think a lot of these movements are actually made by hand. Somebody's actually got a little file in there and they're filing the cogs or they're, you know, they're, they're working on these cogs with magnifying systems. It's just incredible. The engineering, the capability that we have, the feats of engineering that we're capable of as human beings. Uh, in, in putting into these timepieces is just phenomenal. They're a real thing of beauty in many ways. So hopefully you've enjoyed the walkthrough of my watch collection. If you have, then please click like, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you'll get all future notifications and make sure you select all so you receive all notifications of all future videos as they come forward for both on watches and all the different areas that I produce videos for, whether it be vlogging, um, horology, or on supercars and my 458. The 458 is pretty much in storage now for the winter. That was always going to be expected. I always store my second car um, for circa five to six months over the winter period. In the UK, you definitely do not want to drive a car like that um, when there's salt around, when there's a mat salt around that they put on the roads in the UK. I'll be um, providing videos on the main car shows next year. And obviously I'll be putting a lot of content together. I'll be putting together a, a series um, documenting my ownership of my 458 and obviously that'll be the first drive and walk arounds of the 458 and I'll be going to it in details when I get the car PPF etc etc. There'll be loads of supercar content coming in the future whether it be actually car shows or on my 458 or on other people's cars as well. 
um, and there'll be um, obviously I'll be walking through and giving you videos on each of the remaining pieces that I haven't already provided a video on on my collection so thanks a lot for watching guys again please subscribe please tell all your friends and please click like if you like this video and see you in the next video